Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantin equation. X, Y, and Z are prime, are prime numbers, and we're going to be solving for X, Y, and Z. So we have X to the power Y plus 1 equals Z, and we're going to be solving for X, Y, and Z values. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, this problem is from our Bellows, the math journal we just did a problem from which is a math journal produced for pre-college math, philomaths. I looked for um, copies of this. I do have a copy of the volume 2, number 1 through 5, which is from years 1983 to 1984. Uh, they're very hard to find. I couldn't find a physical copy, nor could I find a PDF copy. Coffee. Oh, did I say coffee? Okay, copy. Anyways, they're hard to find. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem. It's a really nice problem. I do not know the original uh, re source for this problem. If you do, please let us know. So we have an exponential expression like x to the y. We're adding 1 and then we're getting a z. Obviously, if you were solving for integers, there would be infinitely many solutions, right? Another alternative that I'm thinking about is maybe we can kind of look at an equation like this where x, y, z, and t are positive integers, will there be infinitely many or there's going to be finitely many or are there any solutions at all? Anyways, that's a different question. Let's go ahead and look at this problem here. Since x, y, z are prime numbers, first of all, we're going to start by looking at y. And you're like, why? If y is even, then we're good. But if y is not even, in other words, if y is odd, then x to the power y plus 1 is factorable. For example, think about this, x to the power 3 plus 1, it's a sum of two cubes. x to the power 5 plus 1, it's a sum of fifth powers. And they all have x plus 1 as a factor, correct? So all of these are factorable when you have an odd number. Of course, in the general case, we can write this as x to the power 2n plus 1 plus 1 is always factorable and x plus 1 is one of the factors. Of course, in some cases, it can be factored in different ways, like x to the ninth plus 1, obviously, could be thought of differently, but that's not the question. So anyways, so y needs to be even, otherwise, x to the y plus 1 is going to be factorable. We're going to have a factor of x plus 1 and some other factor, which means this is not going to be prime, it's going to be composite which means z is composite. Obviously, you do not want z, be, z to be composite because it's prime. Okay, so y has to be even and it's prime. What is that supposed to mean? It means y has to be 2. Awesome. That's very nice. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. We have now x to the power 2 plus 1 equals z. Great. This is a huge improvement. Now, let's think about it. Uh, and we're going to use parity again one more time. Can x be odd? Okay, here's the good point. If x is odd, x squared is going to be odd. x squared plus 1 is going to be even. And x squared plus 1 is equal to z, so that's going to make the z even. But if z is even, uh, then it needs to be 2, but 2 is not going to work, right? Is, is z equals 2 going to work? If z is 2, then x is 1 but one is not prime, you see? So that's not gonna work, which means x cannot be odd, which means x needs to be even. Okay, great. If x is even and x is a prime, so x needs to be two as well. And then from here, we get z equals five. And that basically concludes the solution. So our x, y, z values are gonna be two, 2 and 5. In other words, x to the y plus 1 equals z can only be maintained with 2 to the 2 plus 1 equals 5. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank for, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.